Yeah, today we are talking about the exercises from chapter one. Oh, welcome. Uh, looks like Abdu is connecting. Um, I guess before we dive into anything, I've got, I put some notes together for some of it, but just any, like, how'd you find them? Find them. I, I will say uh, it was stretching muscles that I haven't stretched in a long time. <laughs> And so I was really struggling at first, but then kind of got the groove somewhat, at least. Um, how about you, Ron? <laughs> oh. uh, well, most of them are pretty familiar to me, things I've done before. And in fact, the hard things for me is always those combinatorical ones. I'm like, okay, wait, oh. I got to take six. How many of those? I have more trouble with those than I do with the, uh, oh, some of the series? No problem. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This, oh, yeah. the sum, sums of series and all this stuff, like writing it out, I've done it kind of back of the napkin um, wrong, <laughs> like uh, where you have to kind of like work out all the, okay, what, you know, what are the components of this? Um, but yeah, so it was a little bit frustrating because he has the video solutions and he skips steps and he forgets to do steps and he goes back and says, oh, whoops, I meant to have done that. Oh or, really? Oh man. Yeah. Um it's a I think it's a TA that did it. And so oh. it, it led me to like, okay, I'm gonna actually like write this out in LaTeX so I can kind of like see it. Like I did some of it on paper, but then I um wanted to write it out to where I could really see it. So that's what I've got on screen here. Um oh yeah, you did this totally different the way I did. <laughs> that's funny. So I did it. This one is basically what he does in the video solution for uh, number, this is number two i skipped skipped one uh one's on paper we can talk about that if anyone would like but the video solution on that one is fairly straightforward i think um i still so my approach this was go ahead was to recognize that the derivative of this is just the series for e to the lambda with the fact oh okay yeah that you know lambda times the derivative with respect to lambda of e to lambda is what this sum is <laughs> so that made it much easier to do that yeah yeah that that is much 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 more straightforward so what he did in this and i don't know it was interesting because he uses the result from um 1b it, that's basically that comes in uh like one over, am I remembering this right? No, 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 never mind, never mind. That's not this one. This is this is just right, right. I had to remember where I was. So yeah, he does this thing, this thing where he like writes it out a little bit. And he's like, okay, you can look at step zero or when K is zero, this is gonna be zero. And so you can say um, the sum from K equals one to infinity plus zero, get rid of that piece. And then he basically pulls out, um, let's see, pull, no, he pulls the K. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that, I wrote this out as two steps. So K factorial is, the, is K times K minus one factorial. And then you can cancel yeah. out the Ks. And then um, you can also pull out one Lambda and that makes this Lambda K minus one because everything is multiplied by a Lambda. Um, and then when you've got these K minus ones, he makes it K prime, I called it J, whatever, that you substitute that this, I don't have it written here, but J is K minus one. And that means that J is zero when K is one. And you're back to something that is the recognizable, um, you know, uh, uh, lambda to the J over J factor, or yeah, J factorial is going to be e to the lambda, and that works out to be just lambda. Taking the derivative would be much, much, much cleaner on that. So uh, I almost it's almost that uh, the video solution led me astray, but I wanted to make sure I understood what he was doing. And that was where like he, he did this cancellation of the k, um, you know, he just made this b k minus one factorial, because you could tell he had that in his notes and he couldn't remember why. And he like left the cave for a while and then realized, oh, it was that, oh. that gets about um, things like that. So I, I had to write it out to go, wait, what, where did, where'd that come from? Oh, I see. Okay. So, 
Um, yeah, any other thoughts on that? Like Ron said, taking the derivative is a much more straightforward way to do that. Um, well, as long so, as you uh, so have a comment, I that's that's interesting because I yeah. it's like I I I I just evaluated like I um, when k is zero that was zero then when k is one k is two up to k is three and then I started the competition. Uh, but I, I guess that that's 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 not the right way to do it. <laughs> well, I am finding at least like I do. I I feel like I did. I, I probably did that. Like I probably wrote it out at one point. Went okay. What is this? How does this make sense? Um, yeah, I, I was like, I, don't I have was. That. Yeah, yeah. I was just then at, at some point I was like, no, something might might, might be wrong with this. You know. Yeah, yeah working. I, this. Yeah. <laughs> This way of doing it, though, that they did in the video and that you did is useful because it doesn't rely on the derivative. And then you can actually use this to derive that the derivative of the exponential is just the exponential. Yeah. The power series to the exponential, which is kind of cool. That is cool. Um, which that's is a good fundamental point. property of exponentials. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. And, and I did, I don't know, I liked the tool of saying, okay, well, we can throw away the zero and then can we get back to zero? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know. Um, okay, if this were k minus one, then then we can substitute it something in that starts at zero. Blah blah blah. Like it was uh, an interesting approach. I would not have thought to take this approach without watching the video. I don't think, but I think it was good to have it um, in yeah. the tool chest because then going forward, I was like, oh, is this a case where that makes sense? You know? Yeah. So. And and like in the oh the the, the idea of taking the um, the the lambda, you know, like is it the? You mean here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that point, it's not very clear to me. Yeah. So this is lambda to the k. Yeah. And so if you take out one, if you, uh, I guess I could have written it here as lambda times lambda to the k minus one, because ah, yeah, yeah. you know that's what's happening there. And then lambda is just a constant, so you can pull it out front. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the k minus one and the k minus one, we can substitute in something else to mean k minus one and yeah. j is k minus one. So when k is one, j is zero. And that lets us get back to the, you know, call it k, call it j, whatever, you know, j from zero to infinity of lambda to the j, j to yeah, factorial. Yeah. We had yeah. already seen that that means e to the lambda. And so it works out to be just lambda. lambda. Um, yeah. Quite interesting. It was, yeah, th like I said, this kind of problem solving, at least symbolically, I haven't done this in a long, you know, years. Um, and so it was definitely worthwhile to do this. Um, and then so B, uh, oh God, yeah, this one, I beat my head against this a lot. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do the trick that he did last time and then, okay, and then what am I doing? Um, did the same. So I, I started, I guess, I started by doing exactly what he had done before. Um, so uh, do it at zero. So then it's K equals or K from one to infinity of the sum. Um, let's, let's see. Oh, I did the pull out a Lambda to get the K minus one and yeah. okay. And let's pull out a K from this. So it's K minus one factorial and that cancels out that K. Um, and then, you know, then I'm like, okay, let's sub in the J and see where we are. I'm like, oh, okay, that's uh, multiplied out. So that you can separate that into two sums. One of which, the first one is the first problem. So we just did the sum of from J equals zero to infinity or, you know, call it K, call it whatever is Lambda. Um, and then just had to focus on the other half and then the other half worked out to be, oh, okay, that is that identity that we were already um, using before. And so it's just lambda times lambda, or lambda times the quantity lambda plus one. Did that make sense? Yeah, again, on that one, I just use a second derivative. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which it's funny. Well, because that's how that you used... say that. I think that's probably what he intended when he wrote the question is to use the first derivative, second derivative. Um, I mean, it's but the TA wasn't told that. Really. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's um, kind of all the time in signal processing or all kinds of places where you're using power series like this. You say, oh, I got a, if I got a K squared, I need to take a ticket or a second order to get that, right? It's not just right. the second. You could need this first order as well because that's how you get the lambda plus one, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll have to um, try it that way too to get that uh, sorted out and in my tool belt because I that's think just both you are you bringing down those Ks is how you do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, there was another one. I don't know if I have it in my notes because there was definitely one where the solution they used was to um, take the derivative. Was that? Oh, yeah, that was in question one. Uh, one B uh, to show that yeah. those things are equal. Um, he did, So it wasn't quite it's yeah. not the same. Same thing. God, there might, I, I swear there was another one where in their very example, similar. example. One B yeah. is very similar. It is kind of the same idea. Well, and then, yeah, one B. Um, yeah, I guess, yes. One B is bringing down a K. You know, one plus K R, you know, K R to the K, right? So yes. K R to the K minus one, I guess, what it really is. But Yes. And that's just a derivative, so it's one one minus R squared. Yep. Very handy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. So he takes the derivative of the right, but he didn't. Um, I guess he. Oh, yeah. yeah I guess. Yeah. Sorry. We were proving that. So um, anyway. Uh, what else did? Oh, I, so I did do cool. three. Um, I guess any other thoughts on one and two before I move on to three discussions? I didn't. I don't have one in my notes here. I did it on paper. Um, they do have video solutions of one, and I think it, he hadn't aggravated me enough yet to replace his video solution. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, yeah, the video solution works well enough, at least. Uh, but, yeah, when you watch them, just kind of be ready to pause every once in a while and go, wait, what did he just do? Because he won't say sometimes. Um and he'll say, you know, and therefore that's lambda. It's like, wait, what? Like he, you know, he might have gone from this step and said, and therefore it's lambda. I'm like, it, it is? Where is? Oh, okay, I see. If I work it out. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, and this one actually. Um, I think there are multiple tricks or multiple ways to do this one. Uh, I didn't like the way he or. It wasn't so much that I didn't like the way he did it. It's that he skipped a lot of steps again. And so I wrote it out and ended up doing it a little too. bit different than he did. Um, and so, yeah, this one, um, we're finding the integral from A to B of uh, this, uh, whatever, this whole thing. I looked at this and I'm like, okay, from the book, like from he what he actually went over in the book, we're probably or we can at least do the even and odd, like there's gotta be some even and odd trick in here. He didn't do that in the video. He, he did do what I do here in a minute of, um, uh, of substituting a Y, substituting something in for this whole expression. Um, oh yeah, that's, I guess that's what I write it out here. And then you've got Y yeah. squared, which is even, and then you can just do from zero to, uh, Anyway, so I, I worked that so out one. here. Okay. Yeah, well, it's zero to it works out to be a whole expression, but um, I did. I, I don't know that it's any easier than the way he does it on the video, but it used the thing that was in the chapter, so it felt more applicable. Um, so yeah, the basic idea is you're, we're substituting y for this whole expression. Um, if you take the derivative of uh, that expression, you do just get d you know, x, so dy is dx. Uh, and then to set the limits, when x is a, y is going to be, um, I wrote it out as negative b minus a over 2. And the reason for that is then b is positive b minus a over 2. When when x yeah. is b, y works out to that. And so you're going from negative c to c. And so I actually did a, um, oh, I did negative, I said c is this b minus a. So you're going from negative c over two to c over two. That's the same as double going from zero to c over two. I don't know that that actually made anything any easier, but 
I did it. I guess it puts a zero in there and that tends to simplify things. So it probably made something useful. Um, and then I did worked out the definite integral using C, got that all cleared up. You, um, you come out to C squared over 12 and then I sub the substitute the B minus A back in. And that's the actual, like that's what we were looking to get to. Um, he does basically the same thing on is the that, notes. Is that what their the answer was? B minus A over squared over 12? Yeah, I, I hope. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I screwed that one up then. <laughs> uh, I mean, I matched the notes. It's not necessarily right, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure on this one. He skipped a ton of steps okay. in this when he did it in the video. Um, so, so yeah, that's three A. I skipped so many steps that I must have got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that can happen for sure. Uh, yeah. Any other thoughts on that one? Um, so I guess because it's because of. Well, I was thinking that. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Abdu? Go ahead. I'm sorry. You go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I, I think because it's uh, because of this um, even stuff, you compute at the integral from zero to uh, c over two. Or yeah. So the idea is that it's we're going from you know think of this as just negative uh, d negative d to d, and if you're going from negative something to positive something on an even uh, a function that is even, that means that it the sum on the left is the same as the sum on the right. And yeah. therefore you can just double the result. Yeah. Um, and so that's where I pulled this two out and go from zero to C over two. Again, technically I could have just done, you know, C over two in this and substituted that in here and it would have worked out to the same thing with, and just one there. Um, because it would have been C cubed over eight over three, like, that the negatives cancel out and it works out the same, um, or it's minus the it, it it would be negative c cubed over eight okay. over three, but it, you're subtracting that, so it comes out to positive, so it would come out to two times this. Um, but I used the even trick, and so I just wanted to actually apply the thing that was in the chapter. Um, yeah, Does that did that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it was a, he did a similar trick for B where you're substituting something in for, in this case, we substitute in for lambda X. We call that Y. And so then we can put Y there as well. And the only trick there is that the derivative of lambda X is lambda DX, not just DX. Um, and so dx is dy over lambda. I should have written that in the other order, actually. Uh, and then again, you do the whole thing that way. So then it's just y e to the negative y, uh, dy over lambda. You can pull out the one over lambda. You can do the, um, you know, this is, or the integral of y e to the negative y dy is, uh, you know, an identity that is known, like it's, uh, you can do it via the chain rule, but it's a like a common example. Um, and then this one, it, it was funny because then he says, and so it's one, like he skips almost all of this. And I just had to kind of prove it to myself. I, I wrote out, okay, what is it's if you're going from zero to infinity, negative infinity times e to the infinity is negative infinity times zero. So that's yeah, that, that limit of that is zero. Um, and the negative or e to the negative infinity, that's zero. So that's another zero there. And you're subtracting out at zero. So it's zero times e to the negative or e to the zero, that's zero. And e to the zero is one. So when you multiply through, or when you take that all through, it works out to just be one. And so the one over lambda is all you've got left. That, oh, and something I found interesting here actually is um, like we never had to substitute, uh, anything like the, the, um, Lambda X back in, cause it didn't matter. Um, cause Y 
uh, is the, you know, it like works out to just use Y. So, uh, because we don't have any Ys left over to substitute in. Yeah. So yeah, again, this kind of the technique, it, it's not like it's anything super special, but like finding the thing that gives you trouble and just, okay, let's call that a different variable <laughs> and work everything out in the simpler way and then see <clears throat> if we have to put something back in. Um, it's a good thing to be reminded to do, I think. Any other thoughts on number three? Mm, right. yeah, I, think I actually used a weird, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I want to mention that perhaps it would be better to, in, in the in the last lines, to, to not put zero times infinity, because that's undefined. Uh, it, it is, and, and uh, like, that's what it is. So really we're taking the limit there. Um, it would be better, but that's how it came out. <laughs> I don't know if there's a way to solve it that doesn't uh, hit that strangeness. Just um, put a zero there. <laughs> I was gonna say, just put a zero there. Well, it's yeah. Minus but, times zero. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah that's, but it's just your yeah. note, so it's fine. Right. Like you're getting to, it, yeah. it's, uh, that's how you get to zero, so. Um, yeah, I was, I was actually, uh, like torn on, I'm like, is this, is this right? Um, this is how he did it on the notes or on the video. He didn't write it out that way, but I had to kind of prove to myself. I'm like, I, yeah, I guess that comes out to zero. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't disagree. <laughs> But yeah, this is the one where he just said, so we've got this, and so that's one. And like, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so I had to kind of write it out for myself. Um, so you got a lot of noise one. coming through, Ron, by the way. That's just my, yeah, sorry, let me, <laughs> let me that. Just, uh... the dog's okay. It's just every once in a while, you've got some shuffling sounds. <laughs> That's my papers being shuffled around. Yeah. Um, I just was going to say, I did this one on paper. I, I used a little trick on this one, too, where I recognized that um, x e to the minus lambda x is actually a derivative of e to the minus lambda x with respect to lambda. <laughs> and then you could do the integral and then that way, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then take the derivative. Take the derivative after you do the integral. Gotcha. And then the, the, everything just kind of falls out. Interesting. There's probably something illegitimate about that. I don't know. If that <laughs> <work>. <laughs> you got the right well, answer. <laughs> that's, uh, I feel like, yeah, this one has a lot of kind of um, stink on it of, yeah, yeah, that worked. Um, in either way you do it, I think. Well, I've always tried to see, like, why did he ask this question type thing? So I'm like, well, maybe yeah. that's what he's looking for, but I guess not. So I totally, you know, it's well, like another one. I'm like, why did he ask the question? Why that, why that, why that integral of, you know, that silly integral yeah. of x minus, you know, whatever that one right there. Why that? That exercise is yeah. kind of pointless to me, but right. That and that was, I I was Unless like, well, I'm trick. gonna. There is no trick. I'm gonna do the even odd thing, and at least there's a little bit of a trick there. But it yeah. wasn't. Yeah. No, totally. Um, I and this one, I've got nothing. Something to to definitely note is the person doing the videos clearly. Um, like, I think they might have an answer. <laughs> I think they agreed with the pro professor on what the answer is, yeah. but not on what the solution That's is. It. So yeah. um, there could be some secret thing that they're trying to make us see here that we're not using. Um, like, actually, there's got to be an, well, no, it's zero to infinity. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there's got to yeah. be some sort of odd Something you could do here. Well, one is that oddness. trick with a derivative, but I don't know. Yeah. Because it's zero to infinity. But that's, I don't know. That, yeah, there's no. Um, no. I don't see yeah, there's enough. no mirror here to use with the oddness. So I don't know. Integration by parts is the only other way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Oh, I, so I, your calculus textbook. Yeah. <laughs> and C is zero. We know that because it's odd, right? That's the only one that really has a good trick to it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right. And so I don't have that in the notes because it's, uh, it is, yeah, it's just C is odd. Um, so if we go, I do have the book handy here. Um, yeah. E to the negative lambda absolute value of X is, you know, absolute value of X has to be odd because it's going to be the same for negative X and it's from negative infinity to infinity. So you can just relatively quickly go, oh, that's going to come up to zero. Um, yeah, so I didn't write that one out. Um, I do, I don't, let's see. Oh, four is, I mean, you know, it says using NumPy, but in R it's like um, fairly, you know, th these are just functions <laughs> like, um, so I didn't, I, I did, I, I played around with this, but I didn't put it into the notes. Does anyone have any thoughts or questions about that? Right. No, that's pretty easy. And that's one of the things that yeah. R is really good at. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, five, I didn't, uh, I did it on paper. Um, this was one that, went, the way I did it uh, was, I did start just writing it out like, okay, let's sub in zero. What happens? Sub in one, sub in two. And that led me to see that it was that um, sum of uh, 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 kr to the k or, or kr to k plus one times r to the k, something. Uh, it made sense when I did it. Um, the the identity, the one plus two R plus three R squared plus dot, dot, dot that we have seen in other places. Yeah. And then you can sub that in and uh, it makes it solvable. So I've got that on paper. I didn't take the time to write that one out. Uh, six, oh, six again is just, you know, R can just do these things. Um, so I didn't write that one out. Well, except for part C, I mean, I still don't know what he meant by that. Yeah. Simplify the two-dimensional function. Simplify it? I don't know. It looks pretty well, as simple as it's going to get. I mean, there's nothing special about uh, sigma inverse. It's not like a diagonal or anything. So <laughs> that one confused me. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I actually just didn't get important. to it. But I, I yeah, I, I agree that it feels like something like there must be a way that this you know this means some other formula or something i don't yeah i didn't get there and this one doesn't have a video exercise so uh i didn't get anywhere on that one bit to see if anyone else had done it on the universe but no oh. all right anyone else have thoughts on that yeah yeah i i oh i was like maybe gonna ask because i i didn't actually do it mm -hmm. i was like you know but the, the function looks like a, a gaussian yeah sure yeah yeah. It's a multidimensional, you know, Gaussian, but. Yeah, I don't simpler. know. Simpler. There you go. You just write that sentence. Yeah. That seems simpler. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, there. Oh, that was. Which one was it? One of the video solutions. Uh, I don't remember. He mentioned that. Um, this is a like a distribution that you'll see later. So that could be why one of the questions that didn't make any sense, why it was there. Is it something that we're gonna work with later? Um, I wish I could remember what that was about, but. Uh, so, and then, then we got into the combinatorial stuff. Most of these I don't have in the notes because I just did them uh, like just before this on paper. My approach to these is pretty much always, well, okay, I guess first these ones are just um, combinations of n choose k. So it's seven electrical engineering students and you're choosing three of those in the default case, five mechanical engineering students and you're choosing two of those. And then the full combination is just that first combination times the second combination, right? <laughs> like, I think it's that. So it's seven choose three times five choose two, which comes out to be um, the seven choose three is 30. There are 35 cases, five choose two, there are 10 cases. So that's 350 possible combinations. Does that match what other people thought? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Too. All right. Um, 
so the for B, like that simplifies the problem yeah, because it makes it easier. It's you're doing you're out of six electrical engineering students, you're choosing two. And so then yeah, it's just six choose two times the uh the 10 that we had before. And so six choose two is 15. 15 times 10 is 150 instead of 350. Yep. Okay. So I got. And then so C I actually did two different ways because he could mean two two of them can't be on any committee at all. And so it's just you take two of them out of the pool. It's just three twos uh two. Um and so that comes out to be uh there are three combos and of the ME students instead of 10. And so that's 105 combos total. Or he that's could mean they can't be on, on the committee together. And so they can still be on the committee, but they just can't uh, be on the committee together. In that case, there's only one combo where they're on the committee together in the three, um, five choose two. So instead of there being 10 combos of MEs, there would be nine combos of MEs times the 35 combos of double E's. And so that comes out to 315. I feel like he meant to say that second way because it's a more interesting question, I think. <laughs> um, but either way, uh, yeah, any other thoughts on that one? Okay. I and then we get in. Yeah. At first, yeah, like I did it the other way first. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. It, he could mean that. Um, and then these last three are. Uh, that is the last three, right? Yeah. So I actually ended up, I think I ended up doing everything. Oh no, I didn't do I didn't do 10. Um for eight. Uh sorry, what? Number 10, the birthday problem is actually a well known uh yes. problem in probability. Yes. I just I didn't literally just didn't get to it. Um ran out of time. But I, you know, I'll write it out later, but it's um like he goes over it in the chapter even um to a degree yeah. so it's mostly writing the program to do it um for eight like for all uh, uh all of eight what i the way that i'm solving these and i don't know if there's a cleaner way but i kind of think through uh so if we want one blue one red and one white i wrote down that like okay i could choose blue first and then it's red, red or white, and then blue or, sorry, BRW, BWR, uh, RBW, RWB, WBR, WRB. Like those are the ways that you can get to one of each. And I figured out the probability of each of those cases, and then summed those up. It felt like that was kind of a messy thought, way man. to do it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's what made sense when I was quickly doing it. So I'm curious how others did that one well i just said well there's 11 balls right so the total yep. possible number of draws of three out of 11 is choose 11 three so that's the denominator in all these now the question is we have the numerator and now that i've already taken count of order i can just say oh there's if it's, i can pick one of five red there's five combinations with red there's three combinations with blue and three combinations with white so it's five times three times three divided by choose 11 three Seven comma three, right? Because there's five possible ones with red. Because the order doesn't matter, so now I can just right. the order because it doesn't matter in some sense. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's got to get to think about right. double negative almost there, but yeah, because I've already taken care of the ordering with my eleven choose three. So, the, so the, mathematically, the answer is just five times three times three divided by eleven choose three. Uh, let's make sure that I got the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean i did simulate it to double check if my logic was right but you know, didn't ask um, me to do that i did it anyway <laughs> i like the idea of simulating when you can yeah so that uh that's a much more straightforward way to do it so that's i'll have to go back and um um kind of work through them that way. So then in the the for the second one, talking that through, 
um, you want all three are red. And so the, the bottom would still be uh, 11 choose three. And then, so you're saying you've got like three times two times one for the top well, or? The red is five times four times three, but right. Five choose three on, for the top. Cause it's five red. There are only, there are three red, right? Didn't I? Yeah, no, three red. For all, there's five red balls in there. There's five red balls. Wait, what? what? No, it's three red balls, three red, five right, blue right. balls. And three white balls, which okay. Uh, so uh, probably you know you I just... wrote the problem. I wrote yeah. the problem down wrong, so I did it for five red, three blue, three white. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good because that explains <laughs> slightly different number. I was like, well, how did I get a different number than you did? Okay, because I okay, it in and I just did my own problem. I guess <laughs> how funny, right? <laughs> so you're right that what you said would be then yeah be yeah. Okay. Okay. And then exactly two are blue. Um, and so uh, I think I get a here. different answer on that one too, because I did it completely wrong. Yeah. I mean, I did it with a different problem. And I verified the, the wrong problem too. So that's yeah. <laughs> I simulated the wrong problem too. <laughs> How funny. You should probably um, be able to fix that, but I probably won't. Yeah, I've got a lot of uh, sloppy notes on this. So I, I I think I will go back and do this one, um, you know, working out and simulating is a good idea just to make sure, which is, <laughs> it's funny. So for number nine, I've, I've got this one in the notes. Um, so this is, there's, uh, you have 26 Scrabble tiles, you know, 26 English letters, A through Z, it, uh, mixed in a jar. You draw two at random. What's the probability of drawing a vowel and a consonant in either order? Um, let's see. So, that one again, I, I kind of I worked out that you could draw a vowel then a consonant or a consonant then a vowel. So that's uh, you know there it's basically works out to be the same of five in twenty six times twenty one in twenty five or twenty one in twenty six times uh, five in twenty five, which works out to be there are I guess twenty one in sixty five ways of doing that, um, and then. I made my, I mean, I don't even know if it counts as a simulation simulator because I just, I use Kanban. Um, so, okay, yeah. so I, I was like, okay, I want a function that can, given a draw, can tell me, does it meet the criteria? So that's what I did here. Um, and so I made this thing that has the, the um, checkers. I checked that it came out with the right results. And then, um, with Kanban, you can make like all of the possible draws. <laughs> and so oh, it's right. not sure. <laughs> not like 10,000 draws, it's all of the draws. Um, and then I just did oh, a, yeah. yeah, send each pair through this has target thing. And the mean of that is this 0. 0.3230769, which is the same as what I came up with on paper. Yeah. Um, the main thing that I had to check on this is in um, the, base R function Kanban or stats or base R, whatever it comes from. Uh, there's a simplify argument that is true by default, but if you make it false, it's a list of all the combinations, which the way I work with things is actually almost always gonna be easier to use. So it was good to, to see that simplify. That's so much better. Argument. Yeah. yeah there's, only, there's only 325, there's only 325 possibilities for that, so. That's much faster yeah. than 10,000 simulators. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I, I technically I could make it draw 10,000, but uh, like these are all of them. These are the combinations oh, that you could get. Um, uh, and, you know, I, I don't know. I liked that this is making those combinations is so easy. Like once you know how to do it, it's there is just a function that just does that and it makes all the combos. Um, and then, yeah, I, I mapped it. I wanted to make my target checker vectorized. I didn't get there because, again, this was just before we started. Like, it should be possible to write something that will just check each one without having to go through per. Um, but yeah, that's what I did here. So each, it, it, this is checking, you know, the this is generating a list where each element of the list is a pair. 
um, it's a single draw. And so I just send each draw through my target checker that gets um, a vector of logicals. And then you can take the mean of a vector of logicals to get the percent that are true. Um, and yeah, that worked out the same. Yeah. All right, and then, like I said, I didn't my get solution. to number 10. I'll put my solution in oh. the chat for fun. Okay. My, my very C-like solution. <laughs> Yeah. And yeah. Um Oh, I see. Yep. Okay, yep. And yeah, you generated uh a a vector to put it in first. Yeah. Um also works and under the hood i think they come out to be well <laughs> except you're doing the actual ten thousand draws mine's an approximation yeah Yours is uh, and i mean <laughs> heck yeah for this exact kind of problem um i mean when there's only 26 choices doing the exact solution is uh you know better technically but it, i think it's good to yeah, have the example everybody. It, but it's better to have the example where it's not the exact solution because there are cases where it wouldn't be reasonable to actually do um, all possible draws. Um, and so simulating the draws is still useful to do. Um, but to honest, it is. If this was a real problem and I was able to find an exact solution. I'd still do this like simulation where just to double check, I love doing simulations just to as a sanity check for any. <laughs> Thing that involves common, especially involves any kind of common to I'm like, I know I probably got this wrong. Let me just do a brute force and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, I think that's really that's good to do. And so I think um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't done 10 yet, but I think I do want to sit down and make it um, make a clean uh, piece of code to do it, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, 10 is a similar idea. Um, and so you I can, did. my code for 10 looks almost exactly like this. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I'll, I'll bet it does because yeah, it's, <laughs> um, and I like, you know, you may assume that a year only has 365 days and, but you're kind of, uh, you're, that everyone was born in a year that has 365 days. If you have any leap year babies yeah. mixed in it mixes things up, but, um, which is funny because if you do like, if you do this in a class, like a, um, you know, a grade school or, or whatever, a, a primary school class, um, certain classes, the solution would be wrong for if they're all born in a leap year. Uh, so it's yeah. interesting to think about yeah. that. <laughs> it's like, you should have the solution ready you do a every day? four years. I mean, if if they're all born the same year, then you can just say, well, was that year a leap year or not? Um, but even within like a high school class, uh, not everyone is born in the same year. And so that gets, you know, you get half, uh, some of the students are born in uh, the year before and the year after basically. Um, uh, so it does, it makes it more complicated when you work leap year into there. Yeah. And then even more so in a college yeah, class where you're to... going to have. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could do it just by saying, give them a lower probability of being born on leap day. Yeah. Like a, a one in, you know, the probability in. divided by four, basically. Um, which technically, uh, what was it? Yeah, 2000 was a leap year, but 2100 won't be. So, <laughs> right. Is that odd 400? Yeah. Um, anyway, so, but yeah, this is the basically the same problem just with 365. I, I do want to, I'll have to sit down and do it, uh, both ways and, um, see, make sure that, it, or see how insane it gets basically with the 50 students and making all combinations of their birthdays that gets you know how quickly does it get out of hands 
my question with the combinatorics. Um, but yeah, all right. So um, next week we will have, Ron is gonna do chapter two, uh, which is right. probability, <laughs> which is, hey, that's that's the whole book. So you're doing the whole book next week. <laughs> it's all this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, Unless we'll do, they, I, I mean, read it yet, but <laughs> yeah, I haven't yet either. Uh, the, I, the plan is to do the same thing where we do, you'll kind of walk us through the chapter next week. And then the week after we'll go through exercises. Um, like I said, I'll actually be driving to, from Texas to Michigan, uh, the week after next. Um, but I might hop into the call and at least listen in i don't know i haven't decided yet but next week okay. we'll, we'll go through the the chapter um and i would like to just keep like i'd like to keep the exercises together with the chapters so even if i can't be on the call in two weeks i recommend still the three of you meeting and talking about it because otherwise it drags on too long and gets confusing um but yeah we'll talk about that more next week okay thank you good. Yeah, thanks everyone for, for coming and uh, see you next week. Yeah, thanks.